All right. It is Friday. And as you know, on Friday, we do the Friday financial wrap up with Mr. Michael Zuber. How are you, Michael? I'm doing wonderful, man. Thank you for the opportunity to do this each week. It lets me look back at the week and, and really helps me, helps me get into the weekend. Thank you. I love it. I love the summary and I appreciate all the work that you do day in and day out. It is July the 29th, 2022. It's the end of July. Um, we are in it. The news cycle obviously is supporting everything you've been talking about, we've been talking about for the last 6, 12, 18 months. Let's mm -hmm. get right into it. PCE. What is PCE and what happened? <clears throat> so PCE stands for Personal Consumption Expenditures. It is yet another inflation gauge. Uh, it came out today. The reason this one is important is because it's the Federal Reserve's favorite inflation gauge. Uh, it did a 1% month-on-month increase, uh, which is the highest since 1982. Folks, when you start comparing inflation numbers to 1982, let me just tell you, that's not a good thing. So yeah, 1% 1, 1, 1 month-on-month growth, not good. Inflation is hot. Inflation is you know, a lot of pain out there. So not good, folks. <laughs> Very interesting. Very interesting. Now, the Fed rate, you nailed it, 75 basis points. Let's talk about the Fed rate. Was it enough? What are your thoughts there? Well, uh, it wasn't enough. We have more to come. Um, he, the, the Powell is determined to communicate to Wall Street what is coming. When you tell Wall Street what is coming, they can prepare. <laughs> and um, we need to kick them in the nuts. I don't know how else to say it. <clears throat> Sorry, we need to surprise Wall Street and do more. We need to have a surprise meeting. We need to go higher, whatever that is. Sorry, I muted myself. Take your time, brother. If you need some water, take your time. And, uh, I'm good. you know, it's interesting, too, because you've been calling the Fed rate. You've been calling <clears throat> literally, you know, month by month. You've been predicting. And not only that, but I also the reason why I ask, was it enough is because You've also set the stage in saying, hey, they're only going to do 50, you know, 50 basis points. They should do 75 or oh, they yeah. should do 100. Explain why that's important or how <clears throat> he can get ahead of this inflation. Yeah, again. So I've, I've gone back and looked at Paul Volcker, right? Paul Volcker is the last Fed president to break the back of inflation. I don't think it's without question that we have inflation today. See comment number one. And the reason Paul Volcker was able to do it is he... I mean, by today's standards, did crazy things. He raised intermediate. He raised on weekends. He raised back to back. He did big raises and he took Fed funds up to 8%. He took Fed funds above inflation. Today, it's comical, Ty. It is comical. It is comical that you think you can beat 9.1% inflation with Fed funds at two. Did you know, Ty, going all the way back to 1970, the 30 year mortgage? was above the rate of inflation, which makes logical sense. It just does. You are borrowing money for 30 freaking years. It should be higher than inflation. Your lender probably wants a positive return, except today. Today, no, by any measure, inflation is above the cost of a 30-year mortgage. We are not in normal times. Uh, Jerome Powell either needs to get a backbone or some stones, or he's going to be replaced. Like, if you guys don't know this, there was a Fed president before Paul Volcker, his name was Arthur Burns. His legacy is called great inflation. That's what he is known for. That's not a legacy Powell wants. Right now, legacy's Powell, or, uh, Powell's legacy is transitory. Perhaps the worst call ever by a Fed president. But if he doesn't do his freaking job and break the back, we're going to have inflation for years at four or five or 6%. It's not going to be fun. So I think they need to, they need to surprise the market right now, dude, you, the federal, like go to point the next one, the federal reserve raises rates, 75 basis points back to back meetings. And the mortgage rate goes down. How the hell is that possible? That's because wall street doesn't believe Powell. He thinks he's going to pivot soon. Let's talk about that. So what happened? I know that you've educated early on. And when we started doing the series six, nine, 12 months ago, you talked about the 10 year note and the relationship to the mortgages. What happened with the 10 year note? And what is that relationship? Yeah. So again, right. We talk about the Fed. So first and foremost, the Fed does not control mortgage rates. Some people think they do. They don't. 
maybe an input, maybe the indicator, but no direct correlation. Uh, the Fed funds is like overnight lending between banks. Then there are treasuries, which are based on that, right? Because again, the 10-year treasury is often quoted as the risk-adjusted return. We have now entered what's called yield curve inversion, which means I could borrow money at 10 years cheaper than I can borrow money at two. That doesn't happen except when people think there's a recession coming. So again, the Fed raises rates on Wednesday, mortgage rates get better on Tuesday, and mortgage rates are getting better today. This is bananas. This is, this is Disneyland. This is weird. This is just weird. It's not supposed to go that way. Very interesting. And talk about, so that's kind of, you've hinted and you've touched it. Explain the yield curve inversion, what's going on. And you kind of already touched it, but yeah. maybe just kind of finish that point about yield cur curve inversion. Yeah. So folks, uh, if you don't know this, right, the, the, you could go on CNBC and look at yield curve for three month, one year, two year, 10 year, 30 year loans, I think five year as well. And right now you can borrow two year money at like, I don't know, call it 3%. You could borrow 10 year money at 2.7. Just ask yourself, would you bar would you lend somebody money for longer at less rates? That's not normal. That has historically been a wonderful indicator of an upcoming recession. And yeah, I, I think I think frankly, we started a recession July 1st. It won't be confirmed until January or February. Uh, but I think the housing market is in, in trouble and, and I think a recession is is it's starting already but we won't even see it for six months. And, and this is an important point too, for the audience. You know, Michael's been calling this market the he called it a slowdown, not a crash. Things have slowed down for some people. If you're in a bunch of deals and they're not exactly, you know, if maybe you didn't underwrite them or you had some surprise expenses, it could feel like, you know, it is a crash. Absolutely. The truth is we're in a slowdown. Michael's been calling it. I want to just be really clear. He said this month, he believes the recession started in July 1st, which right. is the beginning of a new quarter. So I want to just memorialize that now because you've been calling this market month by month, quarter by quarter, Michael. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's talk about GDP. What is GDP? I think most people know, but yeah, what is it and what happened? It's basically, it stands for gross domestic product. It basically is accumulation or a sum of all the goods and services that the United States produces. And what was reported this week, uh, actually yesterday, I believe, uh, was a negative Q2 GDP growth. Now, historically speaking, uh, and a lot of talking heads are like, uh, we're already in recession which would mean Q1, Q2 is a recession. Uh, I happen to believe that the Bureau of Economic whatever is not going to call Q1 and Q2 recession because of jobs. And it doesn't freaking matter. We have negative growth. The economy is shrinking. Yeah, the job market is strong, but that's a lagging indicator. I now believe that what will be called in January or February is Q3 of 2022 is the first quarter of a recession. And Q4 will be the second. They, we are going to have get this is wild. We are going to have negative GDP growth all four quarters of 2022. The first two not called a recession. Who cares? The next two, they will be. Very interesting times. Very interesting times. And let's talk about recession, depression, maybe economically from the books. What does it mean? And what are you seeing there? What, what's kind of the distinction this week about recession, depression? Yeah. So what I want to talk about here is you and I are in the housing market. You're a real estate agent, real estate broker. A couple of my experts I talk to every week are in the mortgage industry, mortgage brokers. I want to be very clear. If you like, I actually, and, and you can verify this with, I want to ask you this question right now on a housing transaction that's listed on the MLS that closes. How many people do you think wet their beak on that transaction. Think about it. Loan agents, real estate brokers, real estate agent, transaction coordinators, escrows, inspectors, uh, um, notaries. Think about all the jobs that get a little piece. Yep. It's probably 15, maybe 16 people, right? Probably yep. conservative. Yep. If you are one of those roles, I don't have good news for you. It's going to feel like a depression. I did the math the other day on mortgages, right? We, the mortgage industry originated about $4.5 trillion last year. They're going to do something with a two on it this year. I did the calculation of 6.9 housing transaction times the median home price. 
there was about $2.6 trillion in total sales. If you take a 5% average commission rate and that gets cut in half, that's about $200 billion in less commission. It's going to be, if you are one of those 15 roles, I don't have good news. It's going to feel like a depression. And what does that mean for everybody else? It means the U.S. is in a recession, Q3, Q4. That's how I get to Q3, Q4 is going to be a, re a recession because the housing market is going to pull us there. The housing market, if you, if you are paid on a transaction, it's going to suck for a couple of years. It's going to feel like a depression. What does a depression mean like? A lot of people are going to lose their job. A lot of people are going to switch industry. And a lot of people are going to get stronger. A lot of people are going to invest and pivot and skill up. They're going to learn that they, there's opportunity in the noise. But we're going to lose 30, 40% of the people, as we should. But the remaining ones who stand up, get tall, take advantage, they're going to be stronger. But it is going to feel like a depression. Your business at the national level, Ty, it's going to feel like a depression. The rest of the economy, it's going to feel like a recession. Very interesting times. And so with the recession, with the depression, you talked about people retooling, people reskilling. Some people are going to have to shift industries and reskill for a new industry or maybe get stronger in your own industry, what we're talking about, right, in real estate. Let's talk about opportunities and let's talk about pre-foreclosures. What do you see there? Well, there's a couple of things, right? So one of the things I try to do on my channel, One Rental at a Time, is I tell everybody what I'm doing. But more importantly, admit where I'm weak. I've been doing this 22 years, and my tool belt doesn't have enough tools. One of the things that you are going to be the expert on tomorrow in a 90-minute deep dive with all of my students is pre-foreclosures. Now, let's be very, very clear. I do not think there's wild abundance in pre-foreclosures today, but there might be in 90 days. There might be in six months. There might be in nine months. The time to skill up is now. So you can ask the questions, get comfortable and practice and be ready. I want to be ready for the next couple of years. I believe creative financing is going to be the way to build wealth the next couple of years. I don't know that stuff. I have bought deals cash. I've done deals seller financing. I have raised private money. I've not done pre-foreclosures. I've not done sub two. I have not done wraps. There are so many things that I haven't done that I need to learn. And if I need to learn them, you bet your bottom dollar, lots of other people need to learn them. So I'm skilling up. You should skill up. You are going to come on my channel tomorrow morning, 9 a.m., talk to all of my students, answer any and all of their questions for 90 minutes. And then you know what, Ty? I'm going to publish that video and give it away for free on YouTube Sunday morning. 9 a.m. So everybody gets it. It's going to be awesome. I love it. I love it. And I got to say, too, I'm excited to be a part of, you know, your expert series. Exci excited for the bonus content we did. I feel like it was about two and a half, three hours of mm -hmm. bonus content that you already have up that yep. I did yeah. talking about how to find the list, how to source the list, how to build yeah. a buy box awesome. uh, for pre foreclosures, also in terms of con contracts, documents. Also, too, for a lot of you, if you're in California and you're planning on being active in uh, pre-foreclosure investing, it's important. We have civil code 1695. I had to do a whole video kind of built around that for Michael's audience for his course that it's important if you use the wrong contract and you don't have the right course or excuse me, the right uh, act, the information. purchase agreement, yeah. right information on how to understand that purchase agreement you could actually be writing contracts that can be unwound that you might have even a lot of liability. So um, yep. really important, Michael, thank you for any closing words that you want to share with the audience. No, again, I say the word recession, depression, it's obviously meant to get clicks. There's no secret in that, but I want you to hear me while I do believe a depression is coming to people that are paid commission. While I do believe this depression will pull the economy into a recession I want to again close with for, what Fortune article, Fortune magazine said on Wednesday. The affluent take advantage of recessions and they become wealthy. There will be more wealth built in this recession than was built in the last two nutty years. The last two years were stupid. It was easy to make income. The next two years about wealth. So if you hear me say recession, depression, yes, it's going to get me some clicks. I don't doubt it. 
but I want you to realize there's opportunity behind those words. Yeah, there is opportunity behind those words. Folks, it's coming. The storm is here. It's coming. It's here. You know what? There's an opportunity for all of you. Michael, thank you for all that you do. Have a great weekend. Thank you, everybody, for watching.